Anthony Morganti, I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about a classic film camera, the Yashica Mat 124G. I'm gonna show you some of the features, I'm gonna show you how to load film in it, and I'm going to show you a few pictures I took with it. I purchased this camera brand new around 1980, and as I recall, I paid about $125 for it. And curiously, on eBay, they're selling for around that same price. So they really haven't depreciated in value. But at that price point, I think you realize that this is an entry-level medium format film camera but it really is a lot of fun to use. And over the years, I've taken hundreds of images with it. Now, as you can see, it's, it's pretty boxy looking, and it doesn't have an eye level viewfinder. Instead, it has a waist level viewfinder, and you just open up the top like this, and you would have the camera down at your waist, and you look down on the top of the camera, and inside of here is a square piece of ground glass, and your image is on that ground glass, and it's actually a mirror version of your image, meaning if you're looking down there and you feel like you need to move more to the right, you really have to go to the left and vice versa. Now when you're looking at the image, you're actually looking through one of the two lenses on the camera, the top lens. They call this a twin lens reflex camera. The top lens is your viewing lens, that's where you're viewing the scene through, and the bottom lens is the lens that actually uh, is used for the photo. The top lens is an f2.8 lens, and the bottom lens is an f3.5 lens. So you may get some different looking bokeh at times, because if you're shooting wide open, you're actually shooting at 3.5, but viewing the image at f2.8. The camera is super easy to use. To turn it on, all you need to do is open the top hood, and that turns the camera on. And when I say on, that actually just turns on metering. The camera will work with a dead battery or without a battery in it at all for taking photos. Now, if you want to meter the scene, you're going to have to put a battery in it. Now, unfortunately, the mercury oxide battery that originally was used in this camera is no longer available. The substitute battery for it has a slightly different voltage, and the metering circuitry in this camera isn't sophisticated enough to properly meter the scene with the new batteries. So you're going to be getting some readings that are off. And I gotta tell you, even when the camera was brand new, the metering didn't work very well. I tended to overexpose my shots by as much as one full stop. So at the time, I used to use a light meter to take a meter reading and then just manually enter in the uh, f-stop and the shutter speed uh, that my light meter was telling me. Now today, you could use a smartphone app. I use a smartphone app, I think it's called My Light Meter. I'm gonna double check on that. And in the description below the video, I'll mention the exact smartphone app I use. And it's a wonderful app. I have no affiliation with the company, but I, it really does work very, very well and it has a lot of features. Now as far as ASA or ISO, that is an indicator right on the top. And on the top, there's two windows. One is for metering and one is labeled ASA. And it goes from an ASA of 25 to 400. I do wish it went higher than 400, but alas, that's all we get. Uh, you control it with this dial on the side, so you can just dial in the ISO of your film and you're good to go. Now, next to that is the actual metering, and it's a very simple uh, double indicator metering, which means uh, when you're pointing the camera at your subject or at the scene, uh, one of the two needles will move in a specific uh, spot on the meter. What you do is you adjust either shutter speed or aperture so that the two indicators line up. On the right side, you have the shutter speed, and it's just this little dial, and there's an indicator for it above the lens. So you spin that, and you can see the shutter speed that you're dialing in. It goes from bulb, one second, all the way up to one five hundredth of a second. Conversely, you could change the aperture as well to line up the two needles. And as I mentioned, it's an f3.5 lens, so it goes from f3.5 to f32, so you could dial that in there. 
Now again, I strongly recommend if you use this camera or actually any older film camera that uses a metal oxide battery that instead you use a, port, a handheld light meter or a smartphone app because you'll get a better uh, reading of the scene and just manually dial it in. So I would uh, meter the scene for ISO, let's say 100 film, and I want to use, let's say, uh, aperture of f8. I would put that into the app, and the app will tell me what shutter speed to dial in. So I just make sure I have my ASA slash ISO at 100, my aperture at f8, and then whatever the application uh, tells me that uh, I should use for shutter speed, and I'm good to go. On the left is the focus knob, and again, it may be a little tricky. You have to look down on that gra or ground glass and uh, spin the knob until you think you have the scene in focus. Now, there is an aid. It's a little magnifying glass, and what you do is just gently push on the top here, and you'll fold out this magnifier. And you could look down on the magnifying glass, and that really does help a lot to make sure that you're uh, focusing properly. Another feature it has, one that I've never used, is kind of a sport mode. And what you do for that is you again take this front and you just press down until it locks in. Now you see we have this open area, but we're actually covering up the ground glass. The idea here is there's a little square right here, and there's no optics in here at all, nothing. What you're meant to do is to look through this little square at eye level and if you have a moving subject, a moving bird, or an athlete's running, or someone riding a bike, you would follow them and keep them inside of this little square as you're looking at it, and then you could press the shutter button, which is located in the lower right-hand corner of the camera. Now, I've never used that mode. I'm not sure how well it works. The little bit I've read about it, um, most people say it's a little clunky to use, but I would imagine it's something that you have to really practice with. Now, you may have noticed to get that folded back up into its default position, just kind of gently press on the hood like that, and then you could fold the magnifier back down as well. All right, as I mentioned, the shutter button is over here on the right, and it does have a nice little lock on it. So you could fold this out, take the photo, and then if you're going to put this in your camera bag to make sure that you don't accidentally take an exposure, you could just spin this around and you lock the shutter button so you won't accidentally uh, fire off a shot. It also has a timer that's this little lever over here and it has a lever over here that's labeled X and M and that depends what type of flash bulb you're using or flash you're using. X is an electronic flash, M is a flash bulb. So you would just put that in the appropriate spot for whatever type of uh, external light you're using and it has a PC sync uh, socket right there to sync your light to the camera. That's the major features of the camera. I'm going to take that camera and put it over my shoulder and I'm going to demonstrate how to load film in it. Now I didn't mention it takes medium format 120 or 220 film, so 12 or 24 exposure film. I'm going to load 120 film in it and the resultant negative is 6 centimeters by 6 centimeters square. While I'm moving the camera over there uh, so you could see how to load film into it, I'm going to show you some photos I took with this camera. All right, I'm going to do my best to show you how to put film in this um, by myself in the studio, so it's hard to frame this and make sure I have everything in focus, but hopefully everything works out. Now, first of all, to put film in it, we need to open the back. To open the back, you can see there's a little dial here. It has open, spin this way, close, spin that way. So we just spin this, and then the back will snap open. Now, you'll notice that there's a spool on this side. This is actually the spool from the previous roll of film I used. So don't throw out the spool. Now with this camera, unlike 35 millimeter film cameras, you do not rewind the film back into the canister 
after you're done using it. First of all, there's no canister. It's just a spool of film. So the film will be on this side. It's going to go across over here, and as you take a photo, it's going to wind on the spool on this side. And then when you're done with it, you take this out, you, you uh, send that off to the lab, or you process that yourself. And then the old spool you use as your new take-up spool. So what we need to do is take the spool out of this position and put it up here first. And to do that, there's a little knob on the side. You just pull out like that, and take the spool out. And then similarly over here, there's a knob. And we'll pull that out. It's spring-loaded. And then you put this in there so it fits. And now we have the spool. Whoops. We have the spool on that side. Now, are you shooting 120 film or 220 film? That is determined, or you have to let the camera know here with the pressure plate. Uh, right now, you can see it says 12 exposure. I don't know if you can see that in the, in the video, but that is for 120 film. If you're using 220 film, you press down and push it this way. Now you can see it says 24 exposure. So that's for 220 film. Now we're going to use 12 exposure, 120 film right now. So I want it in that position. Now, the idea here is you put the film over here, spread the leader across, thread it in on this side. And there's two different start points. If you're using 120 film, and I'm sure you can't see this very well, there's a little, I think it's a red mark right here, a little red triangle. As we uh, spool the leader, the film leader across, there's going to be a start line right on the film. And we put the start line to there. Now, if you're using 220 film, the start line is here. So you'd rule, rule, uh, roll that out till the start line is right here. Now we're going to be using 220 film, so I'm going to go to here. So next I'll get my film. And the, as I mentioned, it's, uh, this happens to be Kodak Ektar 100, so it's 100 speed film. So I'll make sure my ASA setting is on 100. And it comes with the, this little tape on it. And you just got to get that off rip it off somehow. Like that. We have the film leader. And you could take that off. That's what I normally do. Okay, so this is our film. You should probably do this in subdued light, and not under video lights like I'm currently trying to do it. And now we have to put it on this side. So we're going to put it down in here and then pull up on this little knob and get it in there. Now we're going to spread the leader across until it goes into the spool on this side. Just like that. All right. Now we take our, our reel and just kind of reel it in. We keep spinning it until we see that start line, which is right here. Now that start arrow has to line up to remember right here. So we just line that up until that lines up. And it's lined up perfectly. And when it is, that's it. And you close the back, lock it. All right. Now on the side here, it says S. I'm sure you can't see that in the video either. It says 12 exposure. That's that pr back pressure plate changes that when we move that around. So we have 120 film in here and we're at S. So the idea is now I have to reel this until it's on one. And it's difficult to see because with the video lights I'm getting all kinds of, of uh, shadow in here. And it's just coming on one now. And then it clicked. It stopped. So then what you do is this has to get tucked in here. So you just go like this and just back it in like that. And we're tucked. Now we're ready to take our first exposure. Now, one other little feature the camera has is right here is just a reminder. You can see that it says day end. That means I have daylight uh, temperature film in here. And it's negative film. You could change that to black and white. You just spin this little thing. And all that is there. That doesn't tell the camera anything. That's for you. Because quite often, especially me, I'll put in this roll of film, I'll take three or four shots, and I'll put the camera away for three months, and then come back and want to <laughs> use it again. And I forgot if I had color film in it, black and white film in it, 
negative film in it or positive slide film in it. So that just helps you remember. So you have that, now we're all set. We're ready to take photos. By the way, the battery goes here, and as I mentioned, that um, the camera will work without a battery. It's just then, if you don't have a battery in it, or if your battery's dead, the meter doesn't work. But you could still use the camera. Just dial in uh, your shutter speed and aperture, and you're good to go. That's it, that's the Yashikamat 124G medium format film camera. Now remember in the description below this video, I'll list that smartphone app I use for metering. I'll also have a list of a lot of film cameras that I've used that I've really enjoyed using, so you could check those out. Also, if you could do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the bell so you get updates, like and share this video. Also, Follow me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram, and I'll have a link for that below this video as well. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.